Okay, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about my 351 stroker build. Give you a, pretty much a simple breakdown of what I have for a motor. So it's a stock block 351. This came actually, actually at a ski nautique. Uh, I think it was 84, 85 block. Apparently it had low hours. When I got the motor, it was, I guess I probably can say, is the most expensive $50 block I ever had by the time I'm done with this. I'm not going to really get into the details. I'll save for a, another video about 302 versus 351. I might touch on a couple little things as I go through this. But this motor was built by Jim Woods of Ford Strokers. I highly recommend if you're considering having a long block built or even a short block, Definitely check out Ford Strokers. Uh, Jim is a, a vast resource, willing to get on the phone with you and really build what you want, as wild or as mild as you want. I'm pretty happy with the result. Uh, very simple process. So for my case, what I had is really had some decisions to make when we got into the block and took the heads off. There was a little bit of water in one of the cylinders. So originally this was going to be a 408 build, ended up as a 414, we had to go 60 over, uh, won't be an issue, uh, you know, people think that this is going to be uh, some catastrophic, car's going to overheat, blah blah blah, that's not really going to be the case. Uh, but with that said, uh, it's not a dart block, so my block is probably going to be the, the limiter on the build, but so be it. Uh, it is an RPN, but basically it's a forged rotating assembly. Um, it is a RPN crank and rods with Wiseco pistons. Okay, for the block itself, it is a non-roller block. So I'm using a hydraulic roller cam. So as a result, I have to use link bar lifters. I'm using the Morel link bar lifters. Uh, these aren't cheap. They're probably in the four or $500 range. I'm sure they've probably gone up since I bought these. Uh, you can spend a lot more than that. Uh, one of the things to note is the power limitation on this block compared to a dart is if you talk to Jim at Ford Strokers, he'll tell you, obviously, balance is always a critical issue. So having internally balanced, you know, I'm kind of getting um, really the best case I can. However, once you start getting north of 750, 800 horsepower at the crank, uh, that's when you start getting into cap walk. So that's really where the limiter is and keeping the RPNs down. So by doing that, I'll probably I'll probably rev limit it somewhere around 6,300. I won't really need to go much north of that. Uh, and then one thing to note is um, if you follow Jim, he will warn people. And one of the reasons why he generally doesn't like to do these kind of builds, in my case, there were no dart blocks available. So we just went with what I had. So I actually mailed this block to him from New Hampshire to Michigan and then back. So this thing has some has some travel miles on it. Uh, but one of the things to watch out for is if you do have a roller block, Jim has seen over the years a number of blocks have cracks where the spider, where the hole is tapped to hold down the spider for your lifters. Uh, definitely check in that area when you're doing your cam bearings. Make sure you don't have any cracks especially in the cam bearings around where the the holes are tapped so i have the package of which it includes the billet timing chain etc this is a power uh, power bond balancer uh, this is a neutral balance internally balanced crankshaft so the oil pan i went with is the ford racing 351 version and the pickup i think i got this i think a if I'm not mistaken, I got this off CJ Pony Parts. I'll put a link into it. So uh, you will definitely need a different pan and pickup. So and when we're talking about a stock 351, if you're pulling something out of uh, another vehicle or out of the junkyard, the limiter on it is really the rods. So you know, if you are considering doing a stroker build, I would at a minimum considering upgrading the rods and the, and the pistons. You know, make sure you have the, at least those forged. The stock crank on, on these are, is pretty stout, um, but you know, that said, you know, you're going to get this far. I basically was just going to go ahead and do a complete forge rotating assembly. So for heads, I have the AFR 205 heads. You can see I'm using the ARP head studs. So this is another thing just to be aware of. If you have, say, like, I'm not sure about the twisted wedge, but these are obviously inline pistons because they're AFR heads 
Uh, but with that said, I got 32 cc dish. So this was obviously going to depend on your build. I'm going to be doing a supercharger. So with my 32 cc dish, I'm going to be about a nine and a half to one as is. I have a custom cam built on the application. It's just about a 580 lift. That's about all I really want to say about that. I'm not. I don't want to give all the details of my cam away, but it's based on this. The application I wanted. I don't want something that is, you know, great on the strip but sucks on the street. So I wanted something with more, uh, more livable street manners. So I might give up a little bit of horsepower, but I'm totally fine with that with my, with the application that I have. Intake is the Edelbrock Super Victor EFI. Um, pretty much did everything. Everything on everything that's on here new ARP hardware. Uh, just be aware that the obviously with a 9.5 deck that the lowers on these are wider than a 8.2 deck and the screw i'm sorry the bolts on the intake are actually just a tad bit longer so just be aware of that that sometimes you'll see some people especially if you have you have to have the intake machined or if it's riding up a little bit some people have trouble getting enough thread uh thread engagement on the lowers uh, I will be using the Edelbrock Elbow, uh, basically, uh, it's kind of the low one, I think it's a 3848 if you're looking for a number, but you know we'll get there later. Uh, obviously tall valve covers. For lifters, I have the Comp Cams Ultra Pro Magnums. So one of the things I do want to mention, the difference between a uh, 351 block and a 302 is a 302 block, it actually uses uh, 7 16 head bolts. When you're on a 351, this uses half inch, so you're either going to need to do some step bolts or something different, but it's not going to just be a direct swap. Uh, as far as bolts inside the motor, uh, I have ARP uh, rod bolts, and then I also put, you know, there's an upgrade where I had main studs instead of main, main cap bolts. So pretty much I've done everything I possibly can to make the motor as robust as possible. Okay guys, that's pretty much a wrap on my build. I'm going to be using a TI Trim Vortec. So I'm probably going to be pushing, again, through an AOD, five, 550 to 600 horsepower to the wheels. Uh, probably 750, 800 at the crank. That's pretty much my target. I want to be in the 10s, somewhere in the 10s at the track. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.